Hello and welcome to the new Power BI tutorial video and in this video I will introduce you to the Power Query. So Power Query is one of the very powerful feature of Power BI and it is part of it or it is part of the Power BI as a separate instance. So whenever you have to do the data cleaning, data massaging or any manipulation in the data like joining, not just a joining but appending, merging and all of that you would be doing it very easily with the help of the Power Query. So I will be starting a series where I will be posting the step-by-step -step, uh, how-to videos related to Power BI, Power Query about what you can do into it and get the maximum out of your data by cleaning it or putting it in a format uh, that you need for your analysis. So before I do that, just a quick information. Um, all of my videos, is present over here in this Google Sheet. So this Google Sheet is present in the description. The link of this is present in the description. Here all of my videos title as you can see close to what uh, 270 plus videos is something you can search very easily and the link of the video is present in column B. That way you can come over here and look at this video very easily. Right. So I will be using the data set uh, so this is the data set link which I usually provide in the description. There I have the Power BI where I use this Power BI data set for, uh, um, for this uh, tutorial video where we will be doing basic cleaning stuff, uh, introduce you to the Power Query and some basic cleaning stuff, right? So let me move it away and uh, show you how you can invoke or how you can bring Power BI. So Power BI, you can bring it from here transform data and clicking on transform data so usually whenever i have shown it previously maybe one or two time i have shown you the transform data option but usually what we do is we go over here we get the data and we start doing the work but if let's say we know that you know we need to apply some sort of data transformation the data techniques uh, cleaning techniques and all then we can click on that and it has appeared on my second window so let me bring you uh, here so this is how the window basically appear, another window appear, which is also a fully functional software in itself, as you can see. And it has a huge big interface for all your data cleaning, massaging and uh, filtering sort of a requirement, right? So you have the home ribbon where the most common features are present right in front of that. And then if you want to do go deep down into transform a lot of different functionality related to the data transformation adding a column is an important criteria because mostly when you uh, go over an iteration in a business dashboard you need to add more and more columns which require more and more business logic and here a lot of information or a lot of features are present then how do you want to view your power query whether you want to view the formula bar or not you want to show the white spaces or not all of that you can control it from here some in tools related to diagnosis you can uh, put you can find it here and help is where you have guided learning documentation training videos support information a lot of things over here so what do we do we first bring in some data like i said power bi data uh, the sample super store data set which is very simple and easy to understand so that's why we bring it over here so i have this data super store saves which i showed you over there and that way what it will do is it will create a connection as you can see and then it will start bringing the data inside it because once we have the data you know all of these features will be enabled for us to do this and I will show you a couple of features related to how you can control your data to start with and then in subsequent videos in future we will look into how we can do it full fledged way all the data analysis related or data cleaning data transformation related uh, techniques from this power BI. So this is how you can see the data is basically coming and uh, over here based on the sheets that you are loading i have loaded the sheet one so that's why the sheet this is coming so this is the name of the query you can right click and you can rename this right um, you can enable the load and include in report refresh that means whenever the report is refreshed it will be included or not 
we will see it in future that in which scenario we need it in which scenario we don't need it a little bit advanced topic so i'm leaving it for now then you can create a duplicate reference you can create groups let's say you are importing a lot of data maybe one is related to finance another related to hr third is related to sales so you can create groups groups are nothing but folders in which you can arrange your queries like this and then function creation advanced editor and properties right so we, we can keep it for later but right now what i can do is as part of basics is we can rename this and uh, we can call it superstore sales rather than sheet one right so that way very easily you can see that uh, this information is available now another thing is from here that you can control is looking at this uh, as you can see abc is present here one two three is present here so which is data data types right or date is present as a calendar icon so you can control it for example row id is present as number however we don't do any aggregation on that rather than count so we can change it to let's say text right so we can click on this one two three uh, on that icon and click over here text and it will change so we will say replace current so it will change it to the uh, row id over here now you have this another thing that i can do is filtering of data let's say there are some uh, data points which i don't need for example let's say if i come to the shipping board and i don't want to analyze anything related to the second class okay so i can uncheck that and click okay when i uncheck over here and click on close and apply in the front end report it will not show the uh, the value the second class so second class will be filtered out it will not come so that way you can reduce the load on the data because every time you create a chart you create any calculation new column basically it adds a uh, pressure on the data if you have more and more data it will have to go through that number of iteration so that's the way the it is the best practice that you don't uh, you don't bring the data that you uh, that you don't need right so keeping only relevant data in mind now another thing is uh, that this as a as part of basic transformation now here uh, column names are properly coming but generally it happens let's say especially in case of a csv file so this was xls file so it was not an issue but generally in case of csv file what it does is it basically does not bring the column name properly so what you can do is you can click over here use first row as headers and it has some options use first row as headers use headers as first row anything can be was you know any one of those two things based on the situation so if let's say your headers are appearing in row 1 and you click on first row as header so row 1 will actually be converted into header so that is one of the very common and basic uh, technique that uh, one can apply if the columns are not coming uh, properly right uh, then another basic thing which i will uh, suggest is looking at the split for example this is the customer id and you want to split it so you can click on split column you can click on by delimiter and delimiter in this case as you can see is hyphen or this dash sign so we can say custom dash is already specified and we can say leftmost rightmost each occurrence right and we can click okay so as soon as we click okay you can see now we have two columns customer id 1 and customer id 2 right and as soon as we have that we can give it a we can double click over here and change the name of the column as well which is let's say um customer id text right and then we can call it maybe customer id itself right customer id text and customer id just some dummy names i am giving but this is where a, a huge functionality Uh, of splitting the column some of the predefined ways as to how you can split it and then you can basically get the desired output so that's another basic transformation that we can do as part of this now uh, another another thing is if you are creating some sample data set only then i would suggest using this function like keep top rows so you can specify how many number of rows or keeping bottom of rows or keeping range of rows right 
so that way rather than you know uh, if let's say you are designing a solution and your data set is having 1 million worth of rows that means when you will import it and you you apply some sort of aggregation create visualization it will again you know takes a lot of time because processing let's say 10000 rows is easy than processing 1 million rows so that way you can keep it let's say uh, first uh, top end rows or bottom end rows as per your need and you know get the desired solution so that's another way of how you know some basic transformation can be used now the next thing which i want to show you the way you can do that is for example if you see sales over here right so over here sales is present as abc so what i what we can do is we generally need to basically change it to let's say a dollar sign but what it does is it returns into an error, right? So that is something we don't want and we want to make sure that um, this is basically not uh, or this is basically properly applied and not resulting into an error but the values or the numbers. Now here if you want to go back, you know, you would look for some sort of undo or something sort of design but uh, it is not coming and usually it is present on the right hand side there is always uh, change steps or undo steps is what uh, usually comes or whatever changes we do you know it is shown in a pane like this right but if it is not coming like it is not shown in in my case uh, if it is the same case for you you can enable it and i will show you in a minute but usually uh, it is displayed as part of power query so if it is not displayed let's say for any reason you can come over here in files and option in settings go to options and then you can choose this piece um, which i will show you in a minute as soon as uh, the properties pane appear usually it takes time like uh, around five to eight seconds to really display all this okay so this is how it will going to look like for you in power query editor make sure this is checked usually this is checked but for some reason if it is not then make sure it is checked to display the query settings pane and click OK and that way you will get your this pane. So this is the change type right so if I just uncheck that you will see that your values are coming back. So what you can do is you can right click over here you can say replace values and uh, when I say replace value you replace dollar because dollar is unnecessarily coming and replace with nothing so you click OK. And you can see this changed right and then you can change this to a fixed decimal number and now it is changed so all of the steps that we have taken is present here there are some settings which is present over here that uh, you can basically look into as to what you did i just clicked over there similarly you can click here click here to understand what what i have done so also you can come over here to see what it was and you can come over here to see what it is now right so that way you can do all of these steps you can uh, record and you can see all of this uh, you know hide and show like this as well and get the desired output right so for any reason let's say if you have cross clicked on this make sure you can enable it with the file under the file settings okay so that's what i wanted to give you the introduction of the power query as you can see in just uh, 13 or 14 minutes we have covered a lot in terms of what you can do already with the power query and as you can see most of these steps are pretty intuitive and present as an option so we will going to explore first uh, in coming days as to uh, what are these options uh, that are already available and then if something is not available then how we can achieve it let's say with the help of some coding and M is the language, M as in mango is the language uh, that is used in Power Query to basically uh, code or do the coding for achieving the desired output. So with that, thank you so much and I will meet you in the next video. And before that, I just close. Uh, I'll just make sure I click on close and apply because every that uh, each and every setting that you have done, you want it to be uh, coming in your final presentation layout of data layout so you need to click on apply and close and as you can see the data is uh, loading and uh, it has loaded 8000 rows over there and you will soon see 
the table and all of the columns are now present here with which you can do the work. So with that, thank you so much and I will meet you in the next video with a new topic.